And now, The Low Post. Welcome to The Low Post Podcast. It is not really a podcast, but it's the podcast version of the TV special Adrian Wojnarowski and I did last night on actual television. It was the starting line to the trade deadline with December 15th being the first day that 119 players signed this summer were eligible to be traded. We get into everything, what the top contenders want, buyers and sellers, teams that are going to determine that in the next month, all of that. Hope you like it. Welcome to the Woj Low NBA show. We're calling this one the starting line to the trade deadline, I guess. I'm Zach Lowe. This is the man with all the information, Adrian Wojnarowski. How you doing? I'm great, Zach. How are you? Good. So as of today, 119 players who were signed over the summer are eligible to be traded. Hurrah. Because we have not had a trade. Not one stinking trade. Since Russell Westbrook and Chris Paul got traded for each other, it feels like five years ago. It's time. We need some trades. Yeah, and and think about it. Last year, from December 15th to January 15th, this first month with all the players eligible, there were three trades, including that opening night, that crazy Brooks, which Brooks is in the trade three-way, which... That was fun. I think that was like two of the three trades without incarnations of that. Two years ago, no trades between December 15th and January 15th. Uh, I do think we'll have some movement here. Uh, in these first few weeks. Well, the, the, and the landscape is of the league is different than it has been since the Warriors dynasty began, right? Yeah, this in this year, more than really any, like you said, the last five years, there are more teams who think they're competing for a championship. There are more teams who think we could get to an NBA final. We could get to a conference final. And by reason, that should we should expect more movement uh, for the simple fact that, you know, you don't have a league of teams conceding to the Warriors, although at the trade deadline last year, that Marc Gasol trade for Toronto, that was a deal that literally put them over the top to win a title. They don't win without Mark. Um, and the next month, I think, will be pivotal. A lot of teams in the mushy middle will, will find themselves buyers or sellers. But let's not start there. Let's start at the top, the teams who absolutely know we are the cream of the crop. We are elite. We are contending for the championship. And that starts in Los Angeles, the mecca of basketball right now. And it starts with the Lakers, who are 23-3. and And as we speak, clowning the Atlanta Hawks. I just saw a highlight of LeBron fake blocking a Rajon Rondo layup. So what's the late, latest with the Lakers? Well, the Lakers, here's one thing the Lakers and Clippers both have in common. They both want Andre Iguodala. We'll talk later in the show about maybe a way or two they can get him. But this Laker roster, it is not built for another big trade. And they'll try to uh, do some things around the edges. But the Clippers... You think there's a deal to be made out there for them, a, a, a hypothetical? Well, the difference between the Lakers and the Clippers, one of them, is that the Clippers can still trade their first-round pick, at right. least their 2020 first-round pick. And if you're if you're the Clippers and you've spent all that dra- draft equity on Kawhi Leonard and Paul George, you are all in. And if you're all in, Maurice Harkless, who makes about $11 million, plus Patrick Patterson, plus your first-round pick, can that get me Marcus Morris? Can that get me another another 3-4 combo forward that puts me even closer to the Lakers, closer to the top? They thought they had Marcus Morris in uh, July, three years, $40 million. He said no to that deal, ended up getting less from the Spurs, ends up with the Knicks. But that's a player that they had great interest with that they saw who could fit with Paul George, with uh, Kawhi Leonard. And, and so to see them revisit that is certainly plausible. I would expect that package to be out there. Uh, I, because again, once you're this far in, you got to go all in. And the Lakers are, are way better than most people thought. I mean, it's going to be competitive just to get out of the first, second round of the West. In the East, look, the presumptive favorites were Milwaukee and Philadelphia yeah. going into the season. Milwaukee is running away with the East and really the whole, I mean, they're 24 and three. They're killing everybody. Um, I, I, this is, if there were ever a 24 and 3 team that can't just rest on its laurels of being 24 and 3 that has to look really hard at itself and say are we sure we're this good are we sure there's nothing else we can do to make our team better it's this bucks team this is the biggest moment for this organization probably since Kareem Abdul-Jabbar right. was there right. um with Giannis staring at the Supermax in the summer i, I would accept them to stand packed but you got you got to expect they're going to look at stuff right yeah like and especially you know anything around the edges and teams like Milwaukee Philadelphia, Boston. I don't expect those teams to make wholesale moves. Philly made, you know, three significant moves last season, but, you know, a Milwaukee team, they're not going to mess with this. And I think um, uh, w- w- Boston to me, though, is the team that they need. They absolutely need more size. 
How do they get it, Zach? Well, let's start with Milwaukee. Yeah. Very creative last year. Four seconds for Miritich. Right. I think they'll look at a guy like Robert Covington, mm-hmm. J.J. Redick, if he were to become available. Um, and, and I have heard uh, they, they're a little bit under the luxury tax. I think they would go over it for mm-hmm. a deal that puts them over the top. So look, look for the And they yeah, have the that, Pacers yeah. pick. Um, that they got over the summer from Malcolm Brogdon. Sign that'll, that'll be out there. As for Boston, look, the question they're going to have to ask is, um, yes, everyone says we need size, we need another center. Are there any centers or any big men out there who move the needle for us to the degree that it's worth Marcus Smart? Because it's going to have to be Marcus Smart. It's not going to be Hayward, Tatum, or Brown, or Kemba Walker. And and I'm, I think the answer to that question is probably going to be no. Boston will do what it always does. It will call all over the league. They'll be on the phone with everybody. They'll try to get something for nothing from a team. And you know, Bobby, Bobby <laughs> get Marks, it, get it. Bobby Marks, our uh, front office insider, had a great fact. The only real in-season trade Danny Ainge has done in this entire tenure was 2015 Isaiah Thomas from Phoenix. That's the only real in-season trade he did. Wow. And you look at the centers that are available versus the three-headed monster that they have at center. It's probably not better than what they have based on what they can get. And like you said, they're not looking to trade any of these wings. I think this will be a team that, you know, still when they get into playoffs, especially Philadelphia with Embiid, you know, that size is still going to be a problem for them. Yeah, and Boston, maybe that's a buyout team, too. Maybe yeah. they'll look at the buyout market. And Philly, look, we all know Philly's going to look at shooting, right? And yeah. they're going to have their first-round pick and play. Cobbling together salaries for them is going to be difficult. But yeah. Mike Scott plus Zaire Smith, that gets you somewhere into, like, a $10 million player coming back. So they'll look at all the usual. Yeah. Name all the shooters. They'll look at all the shooters. That's right. That's right. The team that we haven't talked about that maybe is a little bit below this level of conversation um, and I think has maybe the most volatility in the whole league is the Houston Rockets. And they always try. You know they're always going to try. Right. Uh, they can't trade Eric Gordon because of the contract extension, which actually kind of cripples their flexibility. Mm-hmm. He's the, in terms of salary and appeal around the league, he's the one that really gets things done. That leaves Capella and P.J. Tucker and whatever draft assets they can. They still can trade picks despite right. uh, the, the Westbrook deal. This is a, a big moment for Houston. This is really a moment of truth coming for this entire organization. Mike D'Antoni turned down a contract extension this summer. He's in the last year of his deal. He has shown no inclination to want to do a new deal there. He is playing it out this season. And ever since Daryl Morey sent that tweet out earlier this season, there's even more pressure on him with this new ownership group to advance deeper than they have in the playoffs. The only thing left for them is the NBA Finals I think this era of Rockets basketball is at stake uh, with this season. And, you know, they're going to try everything they can to improve the it, team. I don't know if there's a lot of moves out there for them. Well, Tucker is just invaluable for right. everything they do. Corner threes and defense, uh, I just don't know that they can spare him. And that just leaves what can Capella plus whatever get us. And Capella has been played off the floor in the Warriors series, but really only the Warriors series. And the Warriors are gone, so I, it's going to be a very tricky spot for them. Daryl Morey has tried any number of two-way, three-way, four-way scenarios to get Andre Iguodala from Memphis. That doesn't seem to be... Uh, a scenario that is going to come into play. I think he's kind of throwing his hands up on that one. Um, and, you know, we'll see. I mean, Houston, they're always going to call around. They're always going to try, but it, it's going to be tough for them. Um, next, we will talk about what I think is the most interesting part of the league, the big fat middle. The teams right. that are going to have a month now to decide, are we buyers or sellers? What are we doing? And that includes the defending champs. And when we get back, we will start with them. People, the holiday shopping season is here, and this year, your gift can start next year's good habit with Quip. Quip is something that's sure to put a smile on everyone's mouth because it's dental care they'll actually want to use every day. How about that? That's why Quip is the perfect, thoughtful, and practical gift. It's an electronic toothbrush. It has refillable floss and toothpaste, all intentionally designed to make good habits simple the quip electric toothbrush has sensitive sonic vibrations and a timer with 30 second pulses to guide your routine so that you don't brush too much on one side and not the other and the quip floss dispenser has pre-marked strings so you always use the right amount how about that plus quip delivers brush heads floss and toothpaste refills every three months join over three million happy customers and check everyone off your gift list right now with quip just go to getquip.com slash low, L-O-W-E, my last name, the name of this podcast, to save on gift sets and and to get your first refill pack free with a refill plan. That's your first visit. Get refill free at getquip, G-E-T-Q-U-I-P dot com slash low, getquip.com slash low. 
Welcome back to the Woj Low starting line for the trade deadline. And I think one of the more interesting parts of the next month is going to be all of these teams that, wow, do we really have a shot? Should we go for it? Should we Should we, Should we? we sell? What should we do? Uh, this next month is going to determine a lot of that, right? Yeah, like that 7 to 12, 13 range. You know, these teams who, here's what they don't want to do in the next few weeks, is be the first team to go in, trade their good veteran, uh, and tell their fans, hey, we're headed for the lottery. We're out of this while they're, you know, teams are sending out, you get those emails, hey, here's the four pack of the Hornets, uh, you know, Timberwolves, Cavs to buy those tickets. Come see these games. Right. So they're not doing that right now. They're all looking at each other going, who's going to set the market? Who's going to jump in first? So you'll see those teams as they win games, as they lose games, as we get closer to the trade deadline, you know, those are the teams who aren't going to just jump into this. And that is most of the league. Well, first of all, sometimes the first mover gets the best deal. Sometimes right. when you get out in front of it, you end up beating the market, especially if you're trading a guy at a crowded position and right. a team just desperately wants him for some reason. Right. Um, it's usually going to be a GM with a long-term contract who's the first one to jump in. Job yeah. security above all. Yeah. Um, the, to me, the, the one of the guys that really could swing this trade market from whatever it is now to even more interesting is Kyle Lowry. And, and it's tempting to say Toronto is too good to trade Kyle Lowry. Toronto's too good to, to go into sell mode because they're fifth in the East. And, like, what you know, they're taking a victory lap. This is great. Am I going to get a good enough draft pick plus whatever to make it worth bailing out that victory lap? But as good as they are, they're only fifth in the East, and they're one losing streak from being around seventh. So what do you see for the Raptors? You know, when, when Masai Ujiri gave Kyle Lowry that extension before the season. One more year, took him out of this summer's free agency, $30 million. There was really one reason for him to do it. It made him easier to trade because now teams have him under contract for another year. You know they want to re-sign Fred Van Vliet, who'll be a free agent this summer. I just think Toronto, look at the potential free agents. Marcus Saul is in the last year of his contract. Serge Ibaka in the last year of his contract. And Kyle Lowry, not probably a part of their future They've got to make decisions based on where are they in the standings. Is this team good enough to make a run? Pascal Siakam has made another leap from most improved player to, you know, maybe a borderline top five MVP candidate. And so I think for Toronto, they look at this season and then they look at next summer, the summer of 2021, when like a lot of other teams, they want to be in the sweepstakes for Giannis Atenacupo. So you're not going to see them do anything here that's going to compromise their salary cap flexibility for the following year. If you think they've done that, you will be wrong. Whatever salary they put on for that summer, is they'll, whatever they need to move, they'll be able right. to move it if, if the push comes mm -hmm. to shove. Uh, Baca and Gasol are very good players. Lowry is the guy that can turn a good team into a great team or a great team into a championship team. So that's, you know, what from the from the lower level teams like Orlando to a team that's like Miami, like that, that right. who's 18 and 6, those are the teams that really, I mean, he can help anybody. And, and a team like Minnesota who would like to upgrade that point guard position and to bring in a veteran who can maybe help them get that group into the playoffs, there will be plenty of interest in Lowry if he's on the market. The other guy who, again, could swing this trade market if, if and when is Drew Holiday. Yeah. And, and the Pelicans uh, lost again today to Orlando. I believe they're 6 and 21. That's a deep hole for a team that had playoff ambitions. We still haven't seen Zion. Um, again, Drew Holiday's plug and play in a lot of different places. Um, what have you heard about, I mean, we, again, it's just December 15th. We just started, but what have you heard? Well, last season, there were so many teams in both conferences who wanted to get at a Drew Holiday trade when Anthony Davis was on his way out in New Orleans. They thought they would go into a full rebuild. What David Griffin did this summer was with the combination of the veterans, the young veterans he got back from the Lakers, going out and getting J.J. Redick in free agency, making a deal for Derek Favors. They had hoped they could be, they could compete for the eighth seed. That's obviously not happening. And Drew Holiday has loved being in New Orleans. He's embraced that town. But he's at a point in his career, too, where he's not going to be interested in a rebuild. It's becoming that. And so I think you're going to see a lot of the league here wanting to see Drew Holiday, J.J. Redick, you know, who signed a two-year deal. There's not a, there's not a contender in the league who wouldn't love to get J.J. Redick on their roster. So I think watch how this plays out in New Orleans between now and the first of the year and because and, most of the team is watching to see if they can get at some of those guys. Can I give you my favorite fake Drew Holiday trade? Please. 
to Denver, Drew Holiday to Denver for Gary Harris, some salary filler, and a young player, and maybe a draft pick, depending on how adds Michael Porter Jr. still untouchable. I don't know, but a deal built around Michael Gary, Porter Jr. is untouchable. Uh, well, that, I mean, it, it would be nice yeah. if we could see him play. Mm-hmm. Uh, we'll talk about him later. Yeah. But Drew Holiday to Denver. Drew Holiday's still only 29. Yeah. Like, he's got a lot of time left, and, and to have him play off Jokic, to, again, he's plug and play anywhere. He doesn't need the ball all the time to be successful. Mm-hmm. He'd be a great mm-hmm. trade asset. Another guy who doesn't need the ball but would like it more than he's getting it right now is probably the biggest name that's already known to be on the trade market, and that's Kevin Love. Mm-hmm. Um, three years left on a big contract after this one. Cleveland is going nowhere this year. He's clearly not a part of their long term right. future. Uh, there seems to be a, a pretty big dissonance around the league between. Uh, what Cleveland thought they could get for Kevin Love when they gave him this big contract extension and what teams right now are willing to give up for him. So I'll just put it to you. Will they be able to get a young player and a first-round pick or, or either one for Kevin Love if and when it comes to it? I think they're looking at a marketplace. And you could say this not only about Kevin Love, but we'll go through some of the other names later. I don't know that there's a veteran here who's they're getting back a big haul. Drew Holiday, yes. But Kevin Love, I think you're looking at a marketplace where they'll get a, probably a protected first-round pick and maybe an expiring contract and, and then maybe a throw-in player. You know, there's some teams, you know, Portland was a team that has had interest in love in the past. They have the big expiring contracts there. And I think if you're going to take on that $90 million for love, your team, if you think he can impact you, it's as your third best player, maybe even your fourth best player somewhere. That's a lot to pay that. But I don't think anybody thinks Kevin Love puts them over the top even as their second best. Uh, but there'll be interest in him as we get closer. And I think Kevin Love is ready to go. He is not uh, this rebuild in Cleveland with John Beeline, a college coach. You know, he has shown at some different times here, you know, less than an abundance of patience about being around. He could make it so they feel, let's get him moved now. If he's in this environment, not great to have around a, a first-year NBA coach and a young roster. Well, he took the greatest three-second violation in the history of, of the NBA the other day in Philadelphia when he finally, here it is, watch. One, two, three, four, five. It just keeps going. And, I, and it, this is not does not look like a player who's super yep. psyched to be playing with Colin Sexton and Darius Garland. And I, look, Kevin Love is still really good. Yep. And I think they will get... A first-round draft pick for Kevin Love. Yes. I still think uh, one of these teams, like it's Portland, I think Phoenix will sniff around. I think we'll see some unexpected teams come and say, okay, that's all the price is. And if you're Portland, you're making that deal for next year right. more than this year. Because if it involves Whiteside going out, he's a big part of your team right now. But you have Yusuf Nurkic coming back, and then you put McCollum, Lillard, Love, Nurkic. Like, that's, they, yeah. You can roll with that. Right. That's fun. Um, another team that is going to have to have a, a, a hard look at what it is and what it's going, what it is going forward is Detroit. Uh, Andre Drummond can be a free agent after this year. Blake Griffin limped off the floor last night. A sad scene. We Had don't an know MRI what, today. We yeah. don't know what's yeah. quite going on there. Um, uh, it, what is what's the plan for the Pistons? So Andre Drummond has been a favorite of owner Tom Gores. He loves Andre Drummond. They've also not won anything with a lot of their salary built around Drummond. There's a conversation that is going to go on in Detroit between now and the trade deadline, and certainly sooner than the trade it's deadline. It's got to be sooner. Do we want to extend him? Do we want to stay in the Andre Drummond business? Or is it time to move off of him, see what his value is around the league, and start to reshape this nucleus in Detroit? That is a conversation that's coming very soon in Detroit. One last buyer and, and they almost fit here because there are rumblings about whether they need more size and more mm-hmm. beef. Dallas is way better than expected, even with Luka Doncic out now for a little while. We don't know how it took maybe two weeks to yeah. make man reported. Um, it, what, 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 it, now they've traded those two picks to the Knicks, so they don't have a ton to give up. Tim Hardaway is expire, or semi expiring is a player option. He's probably going to take it, actually. Um, what do you expect them to do? You know, whether it's at the trade deadline or whether it's this summer, I think they would like a big physical presence to put alongside Porzingis, Doncic, you know, and Andre Drummond. How about a Montrez Harrell with the Clippers if they can't afford to keep him? He becomes a he free paid agent. A lot of he, money. He is. And so that kind of player, look at through the years, Mark Cuban, the guys they've gone after, DeAndre Jordan, Dwight Howard. Uh, what other big centers am I missing? There's another one. Well, they had Tyson Chandler for a while. Yeah, so, so they... Link Capella they've been linked to before in trade. Yeah, talk. so that's that's a position uh, uh, that they've had of need. And so, yeah, I think you watch Dallas. They don't have to... 
They're making long-term decisions. They don't have to do that here by the trade deadline, but they can be opportunistic. First of all, if the Mavericks want a big hulking presence, they have the guy who starred as a villain in John Wick 3, Boban Marjanovic, barely even playing. They can use him. And I think they're actually very <laughs> similar. They're, they're sort of like Boston West in that they have all of these sort of center by committee guys that are not household names. They're not even like sub household names. Mm-hmm. Dwight Powell, Maxi Kleba, like those guys are playing well. And I'm not sure whatever upgrade exists between those two and giving Porzingis some minutes at center right. to Drummond is worth giving up Tim Hardaway, who's shooting the lights out for them lately. So it's going to be an interesting yeah. conversation. When we come back, we'll talk about some more teams on, in the buyer, seller, if, when, how, right. and uh, some, some good teams to get to. So stick with us. It's time for some straight talk, people. Look, you wouldn't spend more to get the exact same thing, would you? You would not. So when I tell you that Straight Talk Wireless runs on the same networks as the big guys but charges you a lot less, you got to take that deal and run. And the deal just got even better. Straight Talk Wireless now offers 25 gigs of high-speed data on our $45 unlimited plan. That's right. Get America's best networks and 25 gigs of data for only 45 bucks a month. Straight Talk Wireless, everything for less, only at Walmart. First 25 gigs at high speed, then 2G. See terms at straighttalk.com. The annual NBA on Christmas Day tradition continues with five of the best gifts anyone could ask for. At noon Eastern, it's Celtics Raptors on ESPN, then it's Bucks Sixers on ABC, followed by Rockets Warriors and Clippers Lakers, and then we cap off the day with Pelicans Nuggets at 10.30 on ESPN. All five games are also available on the ESPN app, so you can watch wherever you're celebrating. All right, Woj, let's hit a few more teams before we get out of here. Denver Nuggets, is there? I picked them to get the number one seed in the West this year. That's clearly not going to happen. Uh, but still, I think a team that fancies itself a real championship contender. Yeah. Is there anything besides my fake Drew Holiday trade to monitor here? Well, I think they'd like to get more minutes and expand, ex- expanded role for Michael Porter Jr., their, their redshirt freshman, essentially, their number one pick last year. They specialize in those with Bull Bull now. Yeah, yeah. Like, they'll develop those guys. You know, Malik Beasley uh, did not agree to an extension uh, in the fall. He could be a restricted free agent this summer. And that's a name that, you know, teams around the league have said is is available. And so if you move a Malik Beasley out, you know, it maybe starts to clear up some room. But I, I don't think we see wholesale change in Denver. I think their core is there, although your trade, you know, maybe like Tim Connolly trade. watches the show and decides to get involved in a potential uh, Drew Holiday. Deal. Hey, Malik Beasley made some big shots for them in the playoffs last year. There are there are playoff games they do not win without Malik Beasley last year. He's a good player. Um, the team we haven't talked about yet, other than saying, remember the dynasty that yeah. happened, all that. Yeah. Um, Golden State has a, a very interesting trade chip in D'Angelo Russell. They acquired him in a very complicated double sign and trade mm-hmm. over the summer. Minnesota courted him, took him on a helicopter ride to nowhere, and all of that. Yeah. Um, what what kind of value? I mean, it's been a weird season. He's missed almost half of it. The team is totally injured and broken. What value does he have right now? And and is don't don't you think they just wait till the summer to figure all this out? I, I do, especially if you were going to move D'Angelo Russell. It isn't a big deal. And I don't. Um, to me, a scenario where he could move is D'Angelo Russell and that number one pick. Now. The Warriors could have the number one overall pick in the draft. You've got to see where that baby is. You've got to see where it is. You've got to scout the world this year, decide. Like, that would be, and he's not available, that would be like a Bradley Beal-level player. You're getting a a, a potential, you know, cornerstone pick and a 23-year-old all-star. That gets back a lot. So I think there are very few scenarios in the league where I think that's available to them. But it doesn't make much sense for Golden State uh, to be out there canvassing the league on D'Angelo Russell now. Wait till the season's over. See what it looks like. I know this. They're not going to be making calls on D'Angelo Russell. People may call them. You know, Minnesota had interest over the summer, but they weren't ready. to. They couldn't give D'Angelo Russell a max contract, and they didn't have the space. He's got a max deal got in it. Golden State. So you can see how Minnesota and, and, looks at the salary. I think D'Angelo Russell's playing this season at, at the very least, and maybe even beyond in Golden State. He's still a very valuable asset. There's a healthy debate within the league 
about whether D'Angelo Russell has positive or negative trade value on that max contract. Because as you said, he got the full max, not a little bit less, the, the full thing. Uh, the bottom line is D'Angelo plus whatever that pick ends up being, that's where you let the playoffs play out and, and see if they create the playoff by outcome, creates a new star that wants out or a new situation that goes haywire. And whatever the best deal for D'Angelo Russell that exists now or in February will be there again in the summer. Right. There is no rush. And, and Zach, this. trading that kind of a really high draft pick can be very short-sighted. Even though you want to get another elite player on you know around the age and – uh, the career trajectory the guy, the guy of ready. Clay Thompson, Steph Curry. Uh, you've got a chance. If it's a James Weissman and Anthony Edwards, uh, uh, th- those are hard players to trade away for a 30-year-old somewhere. Uh, speaking of the Warriors, you, you hinted at it earlier. Um, Adrian Guadala is is ready and waiting. He's uh, in exile uh, well, yeah, on the West Coast. But, but, but agreed upon exile agreed ever, upon yes, staying, to some degree. Staying in shape, watching the landscape. But Memphis has been just absolute, resolute, and their belief that they're going to find a trade for Andre Iguodala before the February 6th trade deadline. So if you want him, the Lakers, the Clippers, you have to trade for him because we're going to find a team to send him to, and so you better figure out a pathway to do a deal with us. That, for either of those two L.A. teams, they are hoping for a buyout. And it will be interesting, but great confidence in Memphis that they can find not a 35 years old, $17 million expiring contract. Hard to stack up deals that make sense for the Memphis to take back where they're getting something out of it. Andre Iguodala to one of the other teams is boring. And do you know why? Because Andre Iguodala's most valuable skill right now in the NBA is the ability to guard the very best wings in the entire league and at least make them earn it. And like most of those players play for the LA teams already. I want to see him go to a team where he has to guard Kawhi and PG and LeBron. Let's that that's yeah. more fun. Uh, we'll see. And, and last but not least, um, a, a team that really we thought was conceived just for the sole purpose of making trades involving oh, their veterans was yeah. the Oklahoma City Thunder, who already have nine million draft picks from everybody. Yeah. But they have four veterans: Chris Paul, Danilo Gallinari, Dennis Schroeder, Stephen Adams, who everyone just kind of assumed this season, next season, the summer, wherever they exist to be traded. Start with CP, the biggest name on the list. I mean, are any of these guys moving? There is no belief in Oklahoma City or even in the CP3 camp that there's going to be a trade for him. After the season, another year off of that giant contract, maybe, he's played well for them. $40 million plus, so I think they're resigned that he'll be there. Gallinari is the one who's on an expiring contract. Now, if they can't find a trade for him, if they don't do a trade for him at the deadline, they can work with him on a sign-in trade after the season uh, to a team that doesn't have cap space. And then and then Schroeder Adams are players who they're going to take bids. Schroeder, there's going to be interest in both. But I think Oklahoma City is in a position where, especially with the guys under contract, they could wait till the season's over to do those deals. Yeah, as you mentioned before, I would keep an eye on Minnesota for Schroeder and really any point guard. And, and Gallinari, you nailed it. All the teams with cap room this summer are, are bad. And Danilo Gallinari does not fit on a bad team. Right. The good teams, he's plug and play. And I think Oklahoma City would be wise to stay patient and see, hey, what can we get in a sign and trade for Danilo Gallinari? So that's where we are. It's been a good starting line to the trade deadline. We have like seven more weeks of this, and uh, we'll have some fun. Can't Holtz, wait. Thanks for Can't the wait. intel as always, Zach, my friend. Thank you. Do you ever feel like ticketing websites make getting to the event difficult on purpose? It's as if they're so big they can get away with not caring about the customer experience, which is the only thing they should care about. But with millions of live event tickets and a price match guarantee, that's very important. SeatGeek proves there's a better way. You can search sports, live music, comedy, Broadway, more. SeatGeek has the tickets you're looking for and all in one place. Your days of scouring 12 sites on the secondary ticket market are over. SeatGeek pulls together millions of tickets from all over the web, and then it rates each deal on a scale of 1 to 10 and displays them on an interactive seat map that is super easy to use. Green dots, those mean good deals. Red dots, eh, maybe not as good. Every purchase is fully guaranteed, so you can shop for tickets with confidence. I have the SeatGeek app on my phone. I've used it to buy tickets to lots of things before even Broadway shows. SeatGeek will even give you $10 off your first purchase. That's a lot. All you need to do is use our promo code. Download the SeatGeek app today and use promo code LOW, L-O-W-E, for $10 off your first SeatGeek purchase. That's promo code LOW, BAM, $10 off your first SeatGeek purchase. Welcome to the YouTube Extra from the Woj Low 
NBA special, the starting line to the trade deadline. It's December 15th. 119 players who signed over the summer are now eligible to yep. be traded. No one, disappointingly, has been traded yet. No one got traded. It's all, the whole day went by. There's like three hours left. Don't do that. You just, as soon as you say that. That's true. All right. Um, let's talk about the best team that did not come up on the TV show that right. we just did, and that's the Miami Heat, who are 18-6, mm-hmm. and six, uh, above even their own, I think, optimistic expectations. Absolutely. They have, uh, they have a lot of stuff, not a lot of draft picks because of the previous trades they've made, but they had some interesting stuff. They have an expiring contract in Goran Dragic, mm-hmm. $19 million a year or d- for this year. Right. Also an important part of their team, one healthy. Yep. Justice Winslow. That perfect size contract, thirteen yep. million. Mm-hmm. Also a good player, important yep. for their team. Um, is there anything out there that kind of? I mean, and you know, they're they. Pat Riley doesn't want to waste time. He wants to win. If he thinks he has a chance to win, yep. he's going to go for it. Is there anything out there that's worth their while? You know, I think that the Heat. You know, they survey the market. They see, you know, somewhere between now and the trade deadline, if you know there's an upgrade. Because listen. You, there's an opportunity for injuries to happen in this time frame. Like what you think you may need, you don't need it right now. And that's part of this. What's been remarkable, Zach, about Miami is to many of us, to even them and around the league, it looked like they were going to be this team stuck in the middle. Even even bringing Jimmy Butler in, th- there wasn't a lot of, you know, they gave up Josh Rot- Richardson, who's been you know a good player good, for good them. Player. One of the many great find second round pick who they develop and you look at that scouting staff pound for pound as good as any i think over the last 15 years the ability to go out and find players that were overlooked undervalued you know all over the world the miami heat the san antonio spurs and kendrick nunn out of the g league duncan robinson who was a division three player then it transfers to michigan undrafted and why did his agent choose Miami when he had some other offers? Because of their history of developing players. Then that becomes when you ha- when there's a guy like that, you know, the agents, th- it becomes a magnet. I know they get these guys better, and this team in Miami is, um, you know, you know where they're exposed to it. Like they're going to defend. They've got a closer, obviously, and, and Jimmy Butler now, and like. They're going to be. No one's going to want to play them. No one's going to want to play them in you the playoffs. You know what else they got? Bam, Bam is putting up triple doubles. You called it you on called the regular. It yeah. Uh, the challenge yeah. with them is, well, a they want salary cap space in the sum- potential summer of Giannis in the summer of 2021. So they're yeah. not going like the, the, any deal that adds a mega salary. Like people have wanted to link them to Kevin Love. Uh, that that complicates. And, and, and that's why that Chris pursuit. Paul doesn't make any sense for Chris them. Paul's the same thing. And again, the players that that you talk about as if you know they're sometimes thought about as if they're expendable. Those guys are good players. Like mm-hmm. Goran Dragic has been before he got injured was a six man of the year candidate. Justice Winslow can guard literally every position on the floor. Right. Was there? He's he's essentially their backup point guard. Um, these are or their starting point guard, whatever you want to call them. Right. I mean, you know, they're, they're they're important players on the team. So to find a deal that really moves the needle for them at the beginning of the season, I thought, well, if Kyle Lowry ever became available, he would be the guy. Right. Maybe, but can they settle on a price that's right? Like, I think the Heat are out of the business of trading a 23 year old like Justice Winslow right. for a 33 year old like Kyle Lowry. And I think this time of the year. If you could rule things out for teams, we, we don't always know. They don't always know what they're going to do. But you go around the league and you talk to people and, and they'll tell you often, here's what we're not going to do. And I think you've gotten that sense from even before this run started this season in Miami. They weren't looking, as you said, to trade out 23, 24-year-olds for players in their early 30s. Um Let's talk about another team that has gone the other way in terms of expectations. That's Utah, yep. which is just barely above 500, barely positive point differential. Uh, I think considered themselves a legit contender before the season. Now, this is now three or four years in a row where they start slow and mm-hmm. January, February come around and they take off like a rocket ship mm-hmm. and all the problems that we thought existed go away. Yep. They obviously have a lot of new chemistry to sort out with Mike Conley, Joe Ingles coming off the bench, his favorite pick-and-roll partner, Derek Favors, being gone. Uh, they've had a couple of games recently where both Ingles and the team have looked more like themselves. Mm-hmm. I thought 25 games into the season, if they're I- given their record, they would be beating down people's doors looking for win-now trades. You haven't gotten that sense. 
No, and I think for them, you know, you look at the slow starts the last couple of years, consecutive years 13 and 13. They're 15 and 11 this year, and they traditionally have a little tougher schedule early on. They have some, uh, you know, they have a period coming where they can get fat on some wins. Mike Connolly is such a key to this. If you look at, you know, he's been out with an injury here for you know, about a week. There's some people who wonder, and he struggled early, and a lot of it, I think, and I talked to Mike about this when I saw him out there. Marcus Saul talked about this in Toronto, of just the new surroundings. And that took time for those guys. They were so mentally um, and emotionally tied to Memphis. It took time, and Utah expected that. They do not believe in Utah that Mike Connolly has fallen off the cliff. They believe they're going to get the player that they traded uh traded for this summer, and I think once Connolly is playing better, I think the whole thing runs a lot smoother. They're they're going to def- they've been a top five defensive team with Quinn Snyder. Now they have more offensive options than they've had. You've seen them in the playoffs where they just couldn't score enough. I still think this is a team um, that's going to keep its core together, and I they have a lot of you know some bench players they brought on this summer that you know Moutiers, the Jeff Greens, you know who. You know, they, they hope we'll play better. I, I do think they're going to play better. I, I think they have exactly the two-way potential that you talked about. I, I am surprised to hear that they are not a little bit more worried and fretful because their offense looks completely different. Maybe that's just to be expected. Maybe, you know, they're down like 50 passes per game. They're a bottom 10 offense. They have been all season. It doesn't look the same. And maybe that's by design. Maybe that's the inevitable result of the trades that they made and the changes that they made. But to me, when you trade for Mike Conley, and they traded a fair amount yeah. for him, and when you give Boyan Bogdanovich a very good player, a four-year big contract that takes him into his early to mid-30s almost, you are all in. And you're not a cute team anymore. It's like, oh, we won 50 games. This is fun. Like You're trying to win the championship. That's the goal. And they've seen the Lakers zoom past everybody. The Clippers are, when they have Kawhi and PG both playing, are, are really, really good. Denver's good. You said, like, this is a team that doesn't have a lot of time to waste. I'm surprised they haven't been out there more. Yeah, and I, I think Utah comes from that San Antonio school around the trade deadline. Oklahoma City is this way with Sam Presti, you know, Dennis Lindsay, Justin Zanuck, who's learned under them. They don't make a lot of calls. They're out there uh, waiting for teams to call them. They're not out there putting their guys out in trade conversations. The reason I give this, especially give this Utah group the benefit of the doubt, I think they have such great leadership there. I think they have the guys to fight through it, stay together. Um, you know, Rudy Gobert is still one of the dominant forces Absolutely. in this league. Absolutely. And Donovan Mitchell, remember last summer he had, you know, he was in a boot for a lot of it. He didn't get to work last summer the way he did this past summer. And you've seen him that time with USA Basketball, and you've seen that explosion and the athleticism and the skill that has... You know, has people so excited about his future. I still think the Jazz are going to be right there in the playoffs as a team. You know, that's going to be. You know, they're not. They're not better than the two LA teams, but I think everybody else in the West um, is going to have a hard time beating them. I'd still be making some calls if I were them. Let's end with the team that you just mentioned. Um, is it the end for the Spurs? And if this is finally the end for the Spurs after two decades of excellence, two more, more than two decades. What does that look like? Uh, with DeMar DeRozan having a player option for next year, LaMarcus Aldridge has one more year left on his deal. Is there any movability for those guys? Is there any chance they move them? Do they just stick it out? I think the Spurs, you see where they look. You see what they look like in a month. Well, they never make trades in the season these, anyway. No, same thing. And they never had to. But this is a different day for this organization. And, and they can't abide by those principles or how... They lived in a separate, parallel universe of the NBA because of the continuity they had. Uh, but this is a team, I mean, listen, go back to the summer, the, the, the Bertons trade, where they traded Bertons to Washington to clear space to sign Marcus Morris. It's a disaster. It, it's think, nothing short of a disaster, th- the way Bertons what that is playing in, in Washington. I mean, Bertons is, is taking 11 threes a game or per yeah. 36 minutes because, and making 47%. Because the Knicks thought they tampered with Chris Tapps Porzingis. Chris Tapps Porzingis came into a meeting with the Knicks, gave him four teams he wanted to be traded to. Spurs weren't one of them. But they were still mad at him for alleged tampering. So anyway... Th- They've got to decide here what this is going to look like going forward. Of course, they could, you know, Aldridge, DeRozan. DeRozan's trickier to trade because if you're going to trade for him and give up anything of value, I assume you want to re-sign him to an extension 
And I think in that their, he will find palatable, which is a lot. It's a lot. They want a lot. I think LaMarcus La Aldridge, the way Kyle Lowry is a little easier to trade because he's got the one year left on his deal. But you're not getting franchise changing uh, assets back for them. But listen, this rebuild is coming in San Antonio, whether it's at this trade deadline, whether it's the summer. And um, there, there's no getting around that. And it's going to be a hard road for them. They're not set up to turn this around very quickly. Well, you just said the word, the R word, rebuild. And I think if there's a blessing in disguise to the Spurs being 9-15 and 15 or whatever they are, is that A, Lonnie Walker's starting to get yep. minutes and look pretty decent. Mm-hmm. Uh, certainly ex- explosive He's in talented. the open court. And second of all, you can no longer be under the illusion that you need to add pieces to this veteran team by trading out of your young players and picks to get more veterans for DeMar and LaMarcus. That's the, you can't go that way. The team isn't good enough. That core isn't good enough. So they've got some clarity in that sense. Yeah, and, we, and you mentioned it with a couple of the other guys too, Zach. The expiring contracts that in other years have great value. This year, because you don't have, we have such, you know, especially compared to last year, we may never have another free agent class like that in depth. This is not a good free agent class this summer, so you don't have teams chasing around cap space by wanting to get expirings in to create space. The teams who have space this summer, you know, the Atlantas, the Memphises, the Cleveland, they're, they're rebuilding teams, and they're not signing these expensive veteran players. They may get in the restricted free agent market, some of them, or, you know, or bring in guys on one- or two-year deals. And I do think that clogs up this trade market a little bit. Like, look at Atlanta. They've got three expiring deals, Alan Crabb. Chandler Parsons and Evan Turner. Evan Turner, and those aren't necessarily players that, if I'm a contender, like they come in and help me win. So that makes it even harder as expirings to move them. I do think that clogs up this market. You know, one GM said to me, "I think we're going to see some of the deals. Some of the deals, maybe many of them, are going to be the guy that I don't really want anymore for the guy you don't really want anymore. Neither one of us love what we're getting." But positionally, it might match up a little better for us. There's not the there's not a lot of big impact, um, you know, playoff race changing talents that may move around in this one. Well, and and uh, you know the Bradley Beal extension took a lot of the yeah. out of it early in the season. We'd be on Bradley Beal watch every all, all single day. day. Um, but he can't be traded. This and day, and a lot so. of the big fat contracts from three or four summers ago are, have gone. So those expirings for you know there the team there are teams there are not as many teams that are in tax prison because of those contracts anymore. Right. I just said right that that class of 2016, all those agent. All those, all those big agent commissions have been paid. Everybody's in the fourth year of those deals. Whiteside, Chandler Parsons, Evan Turner, Alan Crabb. They're the expirings now. Mozgov has gone off into the... Biombo. Biombo. And as those come off the books now, those, those are hard deals to move around anymore. Well, we got a month or so to go here. Seven yeah. weeks, actually, so stick with us. But it's been good hashing out the early dynamics of the trade deadline with you. I guess we'll do one of these when people start actually getting traded. Can't wait, Zach. Great stuff. 